Welcome to the Pilot Tribe Network. You know, it doesn't matter what walk of life you come from, your race, religion, whatever. Chances are that the legacy of HBCUs and their graduates affect more than one aspect of your everyday life. HBCU Ubiquity. Hi. Yeah, 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 yeah. Welcome aboard. Welcome to another episode of the new HBC Ubiquity. I'm your host, Thomas Joyner Jr., and thank you for listening to this episode. A month ago, it was all good as we watched the coronavirus crisis take over China and Italy while remaining optimistic that we'd be okay in the U.S. Since then, colleges and universities have released their students for spring break, but have now opted to close for the remainder of the semester and instruct their students online. HBCUs from Paul Quinn to Texas Southern to Tennessee State and Howard, HU, and Hampton have emptied their campuses and are rushing to transition to a complete distance learning mode of instruction. So how do these students that are suddenly home indefinitely make the most of their time while maintaining a healthy and virus-free lifestyle? In this episode, we'll talk with Dr. Denise Smith about exercise, dietary tips, how to maintain your mental stamina, and more. Again, thanks for listening, and let's get started. Welcome to another episode of the new HBC Ubiquity. Welcome back to the new HBC Ubiquity. I'm joined now by Dr. Denise Smith, a Fisk alum, a Howard University College of Medicine graduate, and currently physician and health coach. Dr. Smith, how are you this afternoon? I'm doing great, and it's such a pleasure to be able to talk to you and your audience today about the thing I'm most passionate about. Well, that's great to hear, and I appreciate having you on today. Thank you for joining us. Now, as you know, you know, in this day and age that we're talking on today, many colleges and universities have shut down uh, indefinitely, with thousands upon thousands of college students currently off campus, if not at home, then elsewhere. So with that in mind, what advice do you have for college students and their parents to stay physically fit while at home right now? Do you have any, you know, quick cheats or life hacks, so to speak, especially for students who may be somewhere where there is not um, a lot of choices in terms of uh, frozen or uh, fresh produce, who all they may have is just an abundance of processed and convenient fast foods. Uh, You know, after all, the college environment is often different than the home environment, wherever you come from. So for those who don't, who aren't able to just quickly take advantage of uh, frozen and and fresh vegetables, you have any, like I said, quick teacher life hacks for how to get around that? Well, a lot of, a lot of people don't eat vegetables and don't eat fruits. Um, And, um, you know, it's amazing to me that some people they you know the i ask well what vegetables vegetables do you eat and it's potatoes and corn i say those are not vegetables those are starches you know so we have to we have to you know change our our mindset and our thinking about what is so critical we have to in order to in order to be able to live healthy um as far as Sheets or hacks, um, you can, you, you know, there's on the internet, um, you can find if you don't want to eat your veggies, because it's, it's no way around that. You're going to have to have that good nutrition there. Uh, so you can go on the internet, you can order protein powders mm. uh, off the internet, you'll be getting your protein that way. Uh, if you have the frozen fruits and veg- frozen f- fruits to add to that, especially the berries, um, rich in all kinds of nutrients, your blueberries, your blackberries, your strawberries. Um, you can even throw in a half frozen banana. When I buy bananas, I if I don't eat them right away, once the brown spots come, I peel them, break them in thirds, and put them in a freezer bag mm. so that they're available and it makes the sh- you know, shake nice and creamy. Um, I tell people you can even use a banana or a couple of bananas, add a little almond milk to it, Mm. put it in a magic bullet, which is pretty cheap. You can get those at Walmart and you have banana ice cream. It tastes like a frost, like a Wendy's frost. So, you know, all this available, all these little hacks, you can find a lot of hacks on the Internet abundantly. 
There are so many sites like Yumly, Taste of Yum, different sites where you can uh, where you can Google it. You can Google um, hacks for eating healthy, or you can Google you know shortcut you know uh, healthy desserts or something like that. Um, you know healthy ways to incorporate vegetables and fruits into your uh, diet. You know those kind of things. You can there. They're readily available on the internet. It's so much. It's an abundance of information out there. If you look for it, all you have to do is Google. Gotcha. And you'll be able to find that information out there to fit your particular situation, to fit your particular needs. Right. But first and foremost, you got to go with fresh or frozen second. Fresh or frozen second. With that Mm -hmm. said, Dr. Smith, and we're primarily talking about a population especially for terms of you know the typical hbcu students that are between the ages of 18 and 22 so mm-hmm. for that age group especially for african americans in that age group why is what why do you feel what you're saying is so important and critical right now well it's right now because as long as you you know you can go for a period of time you can go for a couple of two or three four decades not paying attention to nutrition you can get away with it you know if you have a pretty fairly good constitution you can get away with it so you think oh it's not hurting me to eat like this but there will come a day usually in your 40s where all of a sudden you go from seeming healthy to being diagnosed with type 2 diabetes um, high cholesterol hypertension and once that cascade starts, that train is out on the tracks. It's, it's going to take off. Mm. And people say, well, it's too expensive to eat organic. Well, how expensive is it then to spend your last two decades of life in a doctor's office three times a week mm-hmm. in a hospital with sickness and disease, um, with conditions, as I said, the lifestyle conditions, hypertension, type 2 diabetes, cancer, a heart disease. You don't have a quality of life. Yeah. A good quality of life when you have allowed those chronic illnesses to take root. And now it's happening younger and younger and younger. Um, I went to, a con- I, I think back to a conference I attended, a cardi- pediatric cardiology conference at Johns Hopkins University in 2004. And during that, during that conference, it was emphasized that the fat cells that you have accumulated in your body by age 10 or 11 never go away. Hmm. They can shrink, but once you have those fat cells in your body, they stay there. So that's why childhood obesity, uh, preventing it is so important Yeah, because once those fat cells and, and, uh, have, have, have established themselves in your body, they're going to be there. And if you're eating like the typical 20 year old, 30 year old eat, then you're going to obesity is like usually a lot of times that, that, that ignites that fire of sickness and disease because of, you know, obesity that, that leads to type two diabetes, hypertension, heart disease and on and on and so with that dr smith how does exercise play a role in all this or better yet what role does exercise play in this exercise physical activity that's the second pillar of health after you concentrate on your eating um then you you know you have to have some kind of activity physical activity is necessary you know, that's going to de-stress you. It's going to help get toxins out of your body. It's going to help your metabolism um, be, you know, active enough to um, balance out your intake versus your, you know, your output so that your body weight stays within what's considered to be a normal body weight for your heightened age. And so that physical activity is definitely a key also. Um, it even goes further to say that physical activity, okay, of course, exercise it promotes uh it de- it's a de-stressor um it helps your organ system all your organ systems in general function better 
It helps to keep your mind clear for students. You need that clarity of thought. A lot of students go around with brain fog. Yeah. Because of the fact of the way they eat and the, and the fact that they don't move enough. And so I sort of say physical activity because when you mention the word exercise, a lot of people like that turn, you know, they stop listening. <laughs> Because, you know, they think, okay, exercise, they think of it as being torturous, um, long, exhausting, too much effort. But there's so many uh, ways that you can get an exercise and get the benefit of it without spending too much time. You know, 30 minutes, 30 minutes, four or five times a week. But you have to find what works for you. I don't recommend any exercise. I find out from the person, what do you like to do? Some people like to run, run outside. Some people like to jog on the treadmill. Uh, some people like to be involved in cycling or other activities like that. Um, or like me, I, I have for the last 30 plus years, I exercise at home. But, you know, you have to have that discipline. Sometimes it takes a little bit more discipline to be able to continue a a workout at home for four or five days. And even more, just go on. Uh I was going to say, and it's so convenient because all you need is your laptop. Online, you can get every exercise. You can get yoga. You can get aerobics. You can get strength training. You can do all those. You can get all those free. You can get free videos online. Um, for these programs that have all these exercises, it's just a matter, like I said, it's at your fingertips. It's just a matter of, um, um, you know, taking that initiative to find out what you want to do that work for for you, that you will consistently do. This is Thomas Joyner Jr. And you're listening to the new HBC Ubiquity. Yeah. yeah, that could be. And I'm glad that you mentioned the piece about being able to go online and find these because obviously it's going to be harder over the next couple of weeks with, you know, lack no social distancing, uh, mm-hmm. lack of, you know, a lot of gyms are closed, workout places mm-hmm. are closed, playgrounds are closed. It's hard to do exercise the way you were, however way you were used to doing it before, as opposed to now, unless you are used to already, you know, into doing it at home. Right. And, it, and you can find anything from beginners to advanced workouts. You know, you can, if you like to dance, you can do Zumba. Um, it's so much out there that's available. I personally lo- have done pretty much all the beach body, uh, the beachbody.com workouts. And, um, you know, from time to time I change it up and, you know, I've gone from beginning workouts to, um, advanced workouts. Um, that's what I like to do. That's what works for me. But every, I, I, I encourage you to just find out what works for you what makes you feel good and it's just got to you got to have some kind of sustained movement and i say 30 to you know 30 to 45 minutes a day you know i you don't have to do an hour two hour workout just 30 minutes commit to 30 minutes four to five times a day a week dr smith do you have any other advice for us on how to uh stay healthy and, il- and illness free during this uh during this time well, I call my third pillar of health um, stress management. This is a stressful time for many, many people. Um, being in college is a stressful time. It was one of my most stressful times was when I was at Fisk and Howard. And so the first thing I say in terms of managing stress is make sure you know, recognize your stress triggers. Only you can, t- can tell, you know, what is the thing that sort of gets your mind racing and your heart pumping in? you know, you feeling out of sorts. So know your triggers and know your limits. You have to know your limits physically, mentally, and emotionally. And I always caution, you know, advise, you know, create margin. I noticed that young people fill up 24, fill up their day 24 seven, almost. Um, Sleep has become something that they don't really think is important. Because they because they're constantly um, looking, you know, involved in activities, you know, whether it's activities with friends, um, you know, hanging out, whatever, or or even online, you know, stay on the phone or online takes up a whole lot of time and it it 
it puts you in a position where you don't have margin. You need margin. You need to make quiet time for quiet reflection. Well, Dr. And, Smith, you know, over here, school is out indefinitely. So some of us are going to be at home 24 seven with our stress triggers <laughs> for, for a long time. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Well, you know, definitely cut caffeine. I know that is a major thing with uh, young folks, with Starbucks and all the places that you can get all these lattes and special coffee drinks. But you need to cut caffeine, cut, cut caffeine, sugar okay. and cut alcohol. Cut sugar, caffeine, and alcohol. You know, I didn't say eliminate it completely, but definitely dial it way back. Thank because you. Because those things sh- contribute to stress, mm-hmm. to your body's response to stress. Mm-hmm. Get six to eight hours of sleep nightly. Turn off the electronics. Yeah. At least an hour before you're intending to go to bed. Um, and I recommend use this time as an opportunity um, as I said, to create margin, to make quite, you know, time for quiet reflection. And I encourage, um, I encourage everybody, you know, young and old, young and older alike to cre- consider creating a vision board. Hmm. Um, I do a vision board at the beginning of the year. Um, and vision board is so many different ways. You can go online and Google how to create a vision board. You can use cut out pictures from magazines. You can cut out quotes. Um, I do mine sort of in a methodical way because that's the way I think and that's the way I like, you know, to order my life. But a vision board. You can take this time, even though we're into the third month of the year, create a vision board. You know, quietly reflect on what you want your future to be. Um, A vision board is a daily visual reminder of your goals and your dreams. So whatever areas of life that you want to document on your vision board, you know, it could be academic, it could be career, it could be personal, it could be um, um, spiritual, relational. So think about the areas that you want to um, that you want to work on, that you want to um, stepwise go through the process of going from here to there. And if you have it on a board and you have it in a place where every day when you get up, you have, you have that vision board in your, you know, in your sights, then it's a daily reminder of, okay, what can I do today to get to me to where I want to be tomorrow? Uh, so, um, also in co- combination with that, um, now's the time that you have the time to maybe connect with others, you know, connect with someone who's where you want to be. Yeah. Um, and then ask if they'll mentor to you. Most, most, most people, most older, most, most of us in the, in my generation, we welcome being able to speak into the lives of young people. We welcome being able to mentor. So this is a time that you can connect with someone in your um, life or where, where you want to be or a professor um, at Fisk and at Howard. I had mentors that really supported me, that, um, you know, coached me, that that helped me when I felt like I couldn't do, you know, my goals were like out of reach and they got me back on track. And that was invaluable. Dr. Smith, in, in closing, do you have any other advice for us as to how to maintain uh, health and wellness lifestyle once all this is over, once we get back to normalcy? Well, it's it's a matter of establishing the habit. This, okay. you know, this is don't see this as wasted time that we're going through, but seize it as an opportunity to to reset, and that's the operative word is reset so using what we've discussed today push the reset button on yourself physically mentally spiritually um academically and as i said if you do a vision board it's a daily reminder and it sort of helps you keep on track so that when this period is over hopefully you have established some habits that will 
be of great benefit to you when you do get back on track. When you when when this is over and you do get back to to life as we know it. Um, in addition to that, um, I do recommend some supplements that will support your immune health. Obviously, if you're already doing the other pillars of health, these will be of greater benefit. So I always say, if you're not going to at least eat healthy and make efforts to increase your movement, then taking these supplements may not significantly help support your immune system. But right now, the most uh, beneficial supplements would be vitamin C. And you can get those just about it anywhere. They come in the orange juice. They taste like sweet tarts. And they're usually 500 milligram tablets and you just chew them up and three times a day. That vitamin C is one of the, the, uh, the best supporters of your immune system that you can get. And they're very inexpensive. Also, vitamin B12, and I recommend the methylated form. You'll have methyl, M-E-T-H-Y-L, vitamin B12, and that at 1,000 micrograms, MCG, and that's per day. That will increase your energy and your stamina, and also it will help clear any brain fog that you have. And then the other one would be vitamin D3. Uh, and as far as African Americans are concerned, most African Americans are vitamin D deficient. Uh, we have pigment. Pigment keeps us from absorbing the vitamin D from the sunshine. Uh, and so it's extremely important because vitamin D is one of the strongest immune support uh, supplements that you can take. And research now is seeing that if you have a vitamin D level be be below a certain level and you can do a blood test or finger test for vitamin D, that your likelihood of having sickness and disease and especially cancer goes extremely high if your vitamin D level is under 40. Um, the opposite of that is if your vitamin D level is 60 to 80, you have an extremely low chance of certain chronic diseases, including cancer. So vitamin D, the dosage that is the best for comprehensive immune support is going to be five to 8,000 IU, international units per day. And these supplements, these vitamins that I'm talking about, they are not expensive at all. And you can get them from a variety of sources. Um, I would just recommend, if at all, get organic products. Dr. Denise Smith, again, thank you for your time and for this uh, advice and knowledge. Uh, this has been very helpful today. Well, I thank you for this opportunity. As I said, my, uh, my passion is helping others, empowering others to take ownership of their own health. Because we all want to live long and finish strong. And so that's, that's my message. And I, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to, to, to extend this message to your listeners. Well, again, Dr. Smith, thank you. And you have a wonderful day out there. I appreciate you. And you have a wonderful, blessed day also. Welcome back to the new HBC Ubiquity. I hope that this episode was helpful to you as a student or parent. Dr. Smith's three pillars, dietary, exercise, and stress management, are important to remember and maintain during this period. This situation is temporary and will pass, but we don't want our students to lose the motivation to return to school, nor do we want our schools to lose students during this time. Please keep each other, our schools, our country, and our planet in prayer. We'll be back on next week for another constructive conversation with the HBCU community. Thank you, and we'll talk again on next week with another episode of the new HBCU Big Yeah, 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 yeah. Sign up and be a part of the team. Be a part of Tron at Autotron.com. Thank you for listening to Autotron.